Are you searching for a high pressure aeroponics nozzle that will produce a droplet size of less than 50 microns or less and you don't know where to look? Your search ends now. You've been told that the best droplet size for high pressure aeroponic systems is 50 microns or smaller in size. But which nozzle should you use? At the end of this video, we will disclose to you which nozzle you should use that we verified will produce a droplet size of 50 microns or smaller. So that way you are not fooled or suckered into buying any nozzle that is said to produce a fine mist even though they don't. As I mentioned before, I don't have the money to send these nozzles out to a laboratory to be evaluated so that we can come back with a report that would tell us, hey, the droplet size is this at such and such pressure. The droplet size is that at this and this such and such pressure. So what can I do? Well, I do have the equipment where I can actually take a picture of the spray emitting from the nozzles. And then enlarging that picture, I can actually tell the density of the um, droplet size and roughly the, the, pat, the, the size of the droplets. One thing that I can do with my comparative analysis is that I can also compare the droplet size with a human, uh, I can also compare the droplet size with the width of a human hair. Now, through further research, I've been mentioning that a human hair is roughly um, 100 microns in diameter. Well, that is not totally true. A human hair width can vary from 30 microns to 120 microns in diameter. So that means that even though hair is roughly around 100 um, uh, microns in diameter, it depends on the genetic of the person of what the real width of the hair. That's why some people have fine hair, some people, people, some people have coarse hair. Now, through more research, I found that people with black hair tend to have thicker hair, meaning that their hair is wider in diameter. Their hair tends to be around 100 microns in diameter for black hair. People with red hair tend to have more fine hair. Their hair tends to average around, believe it or not, 50 microns to 60, to 60 microns in diameter. The hair that I use for comparative analysis is from someone who has red hair, which I didn't know until after the fact that red hair is actually thinner than people with black hair. So that means that we can pretty much be confident that the width of the hair that I'm using is around the 60 to 65 microns in diameter. So keep that in mind when we do our comparative analysis. Okay, let me explain the challenges that we face in doing our comparative analysis. One is that we need to be able to deliver a constant pressure to the nozzles as we're doing this evaluation. Two, we need to somehow be able to take a picture and freeze the mist in motion meaning that we need to stop the droplets so that we can actually measure it and be able to look at the width of the, of the um, droplets in the mist. And third is that I wanted to find a way to find out the flow rate of these, of these nozzles and to verify that also with the manufacturer. So the, the first one, let me explain what I set up so that we can generate a concert pressure to the nozzles during our evaluation. To test the nozzles to verify their performance, I needed to set up a, um, an apparatus where I can control the pressure, uh, the water pressure, and also be able to turn it um, off and on. So I built this um, setup here uh, to be able to do that. So first, I have a um, bucket here, which I filled up using um, bath, our bathtub, 
which I filled up. And like many of you, I don't have land. So everything that I do is basically um, in our um, apartment. So any of you who are using the excuse that they can't grow, well, your excuse is no longer an excuse. Okay, well, anyhow, uh, to move forward. Um, so I have a five gallon bucket here, which um, I filled with uh, five gallons of water. Well, I didn't quite fill it with five gallons of water, probably more like four and a half gallons. I didn't fill it up to the, to the top. It's not necessary. This is a, um, a gallon and a half um, tank. So four and a half gallons is plenty, plenty good, plenty enough. So I filled up the, um, the five gallon um, bucket with about four and a half gallons of, of water. Um, I have a hose here. This hose goes into the input of my pump, of my high pressure pump. And then on the output, the output goes into a T which is right here, okay. Um, then um, after this T, I have it tied to the uh, pressure tank. Then um, past this T, I have another T, which is tied to my um, pressure gauge, which is reading approximately um, 90 uh, PSI as we speak. Um, then I have it going to another T, and this T is to uh, purge the system. Now, um, so after um, I go through my, um, my uh, pressure gauge, okay, and through my, um, my purge line so I can prime the system, um, then it's tied to a, a, a pressure switch. So this pressure switch is set at 100 PSI. To me, it's more like around 95 PSI, which is good enough for what we're doing here, okay. Um, uh, so this is actually a switch which controls the power to our pressure pump. And then I have my valve here so that I can control um, so that I can control uh, when I want the uh, misting to be on or off. So if I turn this on, I get a miss. Okay, and that's basically how the whole system works. So now we're able to deliver a constant pressure, a constant water pressure to the spray nozzles for our evaluation. And that would be roughly around 90 to 95 PSI. Um, there is one nozzle that I did do an evaluation down to 60 PSI, just to see what the performance hit would be if the pressure should drop off um, during, our, um, um, during our aeroponics um, growing cycle. And that was just like for an emergency purposes. So I did do that. Now, um, so after we got this constant pressure to our nozzles, the next thing is that we have to take a picture of the mist, but we have to freeze action. Okay, we got to be able to freeze action. And, um, and basically we're taking like a still picture of a motion activity. One way to do that is that photographers use a thing called a speed light. A speed light allows a camera to stop motion and is able to stop motion, not by using the shutter speed of the camera, but by using the, the flash of the light. So it's easier to control light and to, to, to uh, it's easier to control light to only light for a slight duration. And during the time that light is lit, it's the only picture that gets captured. So imagine if I miss this flying with the droplet size, um, it's flying across, okay? And as we get the flash, it's almost like a bolt of lightning, boom. You can see a picture. It's very similar to like if you're at late at night, okay, and you're outside or maybe looking out your window of a two-story house or whatever, and it's pretty flat and you can see lightning. When the lightning strikes at that very moment, you see a picture of everything that was in that second, in that fraction of a second. And then after that, you don't see anything. It's very similar how a speed light works. It takes a very, it, it puts a very bright light for a very short duration. And that's the only duration that the camera really sees. 
anything before and after the camera didn't really see. So by us controlling the light duration on our mist, I'm able to freeze the droplets in midair. And the duration is um, uh, less than 64 thousandths of a second. So we're talking about a very fast, fast light. So I'm using a speed light to do that. Let me explain how that is set up. Okay, let me explain my setup a little bit. Um, well, first, that I learned that you can kind of like freeze high speed motion by using a speed light. And with the speed light, I can actually stop time. So basically by freezing the mist, I'm able to basically stop the drops in mid air so that I can take a picture of it. I had to set up my camera in manual mode and I set the speed light to the fastest uh, flash duration that I can uh, make it. And normally you control the flash duration by changing the power to your, um, to your flash. So I drop it all the way down to the lowest power, but when you drop it down to a lower power, you actually have less light which um, makes um, sense. So what I did was that I'm not concerned about having the light spread so that the whole room um, can be captured. I'm just trying to capture the mist coming from the nozzle. So what I did was I put a foil um, cone around the flash so that the light is concentrated um, and directed. Uh, towards the uh, mist. So what happens is that um, I have the nozzle, as I mentioned before, um, tied to a high pressure system, which I pressurize it up to about 90 to 100 PSI. And then I put my nozzle um, at the end of a valve that I can turn off and on and um, regulate when I want to turn it on when I take the picture. Now, when I click on the shutter uh, for my camera, it sends a signal to my speed light, which is um, controlled um, wireless. And basically, uh, so on top of my camera, I have a um, transmitter. And then on the amount uh, for the speed light, I have the um, uh, the receiver. So first, let me activate the the speed light. My camera is, is already set. Let me turn on the nozzle. The nozzle is spraying. Now it is um, ready for me to um, click on the shutter, the camera shutter. And that's how I am able to capture the miss and take a picture and then compare the nozzles um, based upon the picture that I'm capturing. Okay, let's start to evaluate our nozzles. Now, I'm showing you the screen of my hard drive. You can see here I have different um, pictures of the um, the mist coming from these nozzles. I must have taken probably close to over a hundred shots. And the reason why is that I wanted to make sure that I was able to capture the droplet size um, that's produced by these nozzles. And I wanted to choose the, the right um, uh, frame to do my comparative study, okay? So, Let's go to the uh, first nozzle here. Okay, before I do that, th this nozzle is a beat um, right here. A, um, this is the manufacturer, um, and it's called the Ultramis. And the one that I'm inviting is called the UM63. Okay, now I found a problem with 
these numbers. Um, I think these numbers are actually in error. And I'll explain um, later why I think this is in error. But first, uh, let's go to this one, the BUM63. So this one here we will use to compare our cheaper nozzles to see if they are able to perform as good as this one. Okay, so this is the uh, BEAT UM63. Okay, and this is where I'm kind of suspicious about that specification. If I take a, uh, if, I, if I draw a line right here, okay, from the nozzle to the edge of the pattern, which is here, and I draw from here to the edge of the pattern to here. Okay, this is definitely more than an 83 degree angle. Okay, this is definitely wider than 90 degrees. So I don't think this nozzle is corresponding to the specifications of this line. It's not an 85 degree angle nozzle. I think it's more down here. I think this is more appropriate of what the, uh, what the nozzle is. And so this is a wider angle at 110 degrees. And here we see that the flow rate is 0 0.045 gallons um, per a minute. We want to convert this to per an hour. So if we time this by 60, that would give, give us the gallons per an hour. So I did some calculations here. Okay, so we take uh, uh, 0 0.045 times 60, give us roughly 2.7 gallons an hour. Now, if this was the nozzle that they said that was um, outlined, it would produce approximately about one gallon an hour. So this is not true because I did verify the flow rate of that nozzle and the flow rate of that nozzle is more closer to three gallons, not the one gallon. So that's a double verification that, um, uh, that tells me that this here, uh, this line here is incorrect. It actually is a UM170 more so than a UM663. And I think what it is is that when you order these nozzles, you can order the, um, the spray pattern. Um, uh, the one I ordered um, was a wide spray pattern, but this chart said that it's a medium spray pattern. So I'm thinking that uh, even though they still call it a UM63, it has the wide spray pattern, so it's more appropriate for it to be on this line, which produces basically three gallons an hour. Okay, so now let's go back to our image here. And this is beautiful. Look at all this misting here. Okay, so the light is coming through here, and you can see how it captured all of this fine mist. You can see some larger ones here that are definitely over 50 microns. Okay, and this look look at that beauty there, man. We just we just froze that drop right there in midair. I mean, remember this is emitting from the nozzle at some high velocity, but because of the speed light, we're able to freeze these drops in midair. So, man, this is going to work out beautifully. We are going to able we will definitely be able to do a comparative study of the spray droplets emitting from these nozzles. Okay, now let me show you something here. Um, Okay, so what I did was I put a, um, a piece of human hair, I put a piece of human hair right here in front of the nozzle at the same distance that I took all the other pictures. I didn't change my setup. All I did was place this, this, uh, this human hair in front of the nozzle. And I want to use this hair as reference. Now, what I found out was that the thickness of human hair, I said was close to 100 microns. It's not totally true. Um, the thickness of a human hair can vary from um, um, 30 to 120 microns in diameter. Um, and then I might have dug even deeper. Um, black hair um, is seems to be coarser than lighter hair. So black hair is said to be probably more like around 90 to 100 microns in diameter. And red hair is on the lower end of between um, uh, closer to 50 to 65 microns. This hair I know I got from someone who has dark red hair. And also too, I know that the person says that they have fine hair. So we can come to the conclusion that this hair 
it's probably closer to 60 or 65 microns in diameter. So remember that when we compare this to um, the droplet size. Now what I did was I took a section out of here, I cut it, and then I overlaid that on top of the mist being produced by these nozzles for our comparison to see if the drops are wider or um, more narrow than the width of this human hair. Okay, so let's go to our first one, which is the, uh, the beat nozzle. Okay, so this is the beat nozzle. Let me remove these lines that I did earlier. Okay, and then we got the Okay. Let's close that back. Okay, so right here, this is the width of the human hair. I circled this droplet here and you see that this here is basically almost the same width of the human hair. So this drop here, we can come to the conclusion that is closer to 60 microns or 65 microns in width, which is pretty good. And then we have these other drops here. So let's move this image here. Okay. And I can see this here is definitely smaller. So this here droplet is within this diameter of this um, circle. So this droplet is definitely smaller than um, 50 uh, microns. And then we have another drop over here that's definitely smaller than 50 microns. We have another droplet over here that's definitely smaller than 50 microns. Okay, so this is, this is nice. This is nice. Okay, right here we have one that's probably slightly under uh, 60 microns so we can say that's 50 microns okay so we have quite a few here that's under 50 microns now this haze right here or that the drops are so fine that it just looks like a cloud okay so we are producing droplet sizes of 50 microns and smaller and there are some larger ones but not too many large ones like this one here is a larger one okay so that now fits in size, so that's probably closer to 60 microns. So it, it's producing a lot of droplet size under 60 uh, microns. Okay, so this is the beat UM63. And we have to remember that the flow rate on this one here is different and the spray angle is different than their specifications. So we can come to the uh, conclusion that this is more of a three gallon per an hour flow rate nozzle that produces um, approximately 50 micron droplet sizes okay so now let's go on to our next um, uh, uh, nozzle which is also a certified nozzle okay so let's move on to the next nozzle now this is also another nozzle that is um, certified or that was um, verified to produce uh, 50 microns in droplet size and smaller let me show you that um, see their website is here okay and you can see right here they say that they actually say that their nozzles produce 50 microns in droplet size so <clears throat> if you look here they say that the spraying angle is 65 degrees and if you notice here the price is 220 each <clears throat> and they only sell business to business okay and this is the reason why I did not um, recommend that recommend this nozzle to you because you couldn't get a hold of it anyway. And plus, the price is a little bit high. But I do have um, their nozzles, and so I'm able to use them to evaluate the cheaper nozzles, the more economical nozzles. Okay, so let's look at the spray pattern coming from this nozzle. You can see it here. Now, remember in the literature, it, it says that their nozzles are 65 degrees in angle, and I can kind of see that already here. Just to, sh just to verify it, let's draw the line on the edges of the spray pattern. Okay, so we do it from here to here, and then from here 
through here. Okay, that there looks good. So we can definitely see this, and this is definitely a 65 degree pattern. It's, it's more narrow than 90 degrees, but this is nice. Here we do see um, a lot of uh, droplets on the fine side, and we even have some larger ones here. But yeah, we capture the droplets real nice with the, uh, with the speed light and with the camera set up. Okay, so now let's compare this to human hair. Okay. Okay, so this is coming from that nozzle, and we can see that this droplet right here is definitely within inside the width of the human hair. These are the boundaries of the human hair. So the width between here and here, we can say is about 60 to 65 microns in width. Let's take this image and move it to another. Um, area let's, see. let's take all of this and move it all in at the same time uh, maybe I can't move them all at the same time maybe I can do it this way let's see Now I should move all at the same time. So let's move this to here. So that's definitely less than 50 microns. Let's move it to this droplet here. That's definitely less than 50 microns. Let's move it to this droplet over here. I'm not sure you can see that, it's kind of faint, but that's also less than 50 microns. Let's move it to, what's another drop I can see pretty good right here less than 50 microns so we can see that all of these around here are less than 50 microns okay not to me droplets are larger than 50 microns so this nozzle produces um, um, a lot of 50 microns so we can see that our analogy or our comparison with a human hair is working pretty well okay now let's move on to our first economical or budget nozzle and see how it performs okay so let's go to our first one which is this one let's collapse this let's get the let's get the angle of this that's the edge here and the edge there so that's the spray pattern angle, and that is pretty close to a 90 degree spray pattern. So this nozzle is within 90 degrees, but look at all of this. I mean, this is just beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Look at all those droplets there. Okay, they're so fine, it just looks like a cloud. And then we can see uh, droplets here forming along the edge of the, of the cone. Okay, and remember now, this is a hollow cone, and most of these particles are droplets are on the outside of that cone okay so this is nice very very nice. i really like this and remember this is a budget nozzle and it actually is producing more mist than the ones that were um uh were verified to produce uh, 50 microns okay so now let's compare this to uh, human hair so let's go here Okay, so this is um, the width of the human hair here that Ray drew. And here you can see I have one here. I've moved that out of the way so you can see it. So this here is one droplet right there. You can see the shadow of it. Okay, let me move this back over. Okay, so you can see that this is the width of the hair and this is the droplet size. And so this droplet here is pretty much within um, 60 to 65 microns. Then we have another one over here. This one here is definitely also uh, within um, 65 microns. It's actually smaller. That one is smaller. Then I have another one over here. That's a little bit bigger, so it's probably more like um, 
a little, little bigger than this circle, but still within the 60 microns. We have another one over here. That's definitely, you can see this one here. Kind of move it up here a little more. Okay, right there. That definitely is smaller than um, 60 or 65 microns. Okay, so we have quite a few droplet size in here that are um, less than 50 microns. So this is this this is this here is beautiful. I really like that. And remember, this is the budget one that you can actually buy off of Amazon. So all of you have access to this nozzle. Now let's move into the next nozzle, which is also an economical or a budget nozzle. Wow, and this is definitely amazing um, from a budget nozzle. Now this one here, I think is going to be the best of all of all of them. Um, this is producing a lot of fine mist, and it's producing a lot of Look at all this. This is definitely um, droplet size of less than 50 microns. Okay, I mean this is so lovely. You know the most picture picture perfect, but you can see how the drops are being propelled. You know through um, the mist here, and then how that as you get more and more away from the nozzle is losing its formation, which is what we like to see. Okay, so here you see a little bit waving here a little bit waving here okay compared to here you can see that how that the mist is being thrown out okay and then here definitely you, you're losing the, the pattern a little bit okay this is all telling us that that mist is definitely uh, within um, 50 microns now let's do the angle here what, this, what the spray angle is okay draw from here to here and from here to here okay once again this is like a 90 degree angle okay so this 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 nozzle uh, spray angle is around 90 degree which is about you know about the medium for a spray angle okay but yeah once again I love this this is impressive okay for a budget nozzle now let, let's compare this to um, human hair Okay, here we go. Right away, I can you can see the density of droplets in here. I mean, this is this totally dense, and this is the width of a human hair here. Let me draw a line so you can see that. Let me change this to one pixel in in diameter, and draw a line here. And I'm right here. Okay, so between here and here, we're talking about 60 to 65 microns in width. So any place where a droplet, so here we have almost three droplets, right? One here, one here, and one here. They're almost from here to here is about the width of a hair, human hair. So we can say that these droplets are definitely smaller. And 50 microns. I mean, if you say that they're about one third, that means it's about 20 microns each. So this is this nozzle is producing a lot of droplet sizes uh, within the 50 micron range. Now let's see. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so zoom out, and you can have a better idea of the density of droplets in here. Let me select this. Okay, so there's just so many droplets in here. I mean, I don't even know where to start. Man, this is just lovely. Man, I just this nozzle is going to be my favorite nozzle right here, you know. So, I'm going to actually recommend that you guys buy this one. Um, this right here says it all. So, this is the droplet here. Okay, this is the width of the human hair, it's here. So this is definitely, you know, within the 50 microns. So this nozzle here, which is um, this one here, okay, this one here, is definitely a a buyer. You want to buy this nozzle, and you can pick this up at Amazon, okay. 
Now, there is one thing that I wanted to do was look at a nozzle that was my first nozzle that was recommended to me by a um, high pressure aeroponics store. So they claim that this is a high pressure aeroponic nozzle. So let's take a look at that one. Okay. So we're right here. What? Wait a minute here. This nozzle is not producing too many droplet sizes in around the 50 microns. Well, first let's 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 get the angle of this nozzle. Okay, it's like from here to here, and then from here to here. So this nozzle here is uh, definitely um, less than um, 90 degrees. So it looks more like closer like to 65 or whatever. But this nozzle, I don't believe it. So I've been using this nozzle for about a year uh, from this high pressure aeroponic store who claims that this is a high pressure aeroponic nozzle. And you can see definitely a, a huge difference with this compared to this. No comparison. Remember, this is taken from the same camera, the same light, and from the same distance. So everything else being equal, this nozzle nowhere compares to a true high pressure aeroponic nozzle. Now, yeah, this is just disappointing. Um, this, this company should not be selling this nozzle to individuals claiming that it is ideal for high pressure aeroponics. Yeah, this is a disgrace that they're selling this and these nozzles are not cheap. Uh, let's move on and compare it to uh, human hair. I'm already um, not liking this. Okay, so this is the human hair here. Let me draw a line just like I did before. The width of the human hair. Okay, this is one of the, of the droplets here. Oops, let me see. Let me draw with the pencil. Here we go. Yep, go ahead and convert it. Okay, so I draw around here. You can see the outline of the droplet. Okay, so the droplet is definitely wider than the width of human hair. So this is looking more like, so remember this is around 65. This is looking like it's close to 20% more maybe, I can kind of kind of say. You know, so another 15 more. So we're talking about it's like 80. This is like 80 microns probably in, in size. Okay, um, let's zoom out more. Right now I'm at 500. Let's go to 300. Okay, here's some drops here. These drops look like they might be in uh, 50 microns. Let's move this over. Okay, so remember this is this is a 80 micron width, so that's probably like around 60. This one here, this one here is probably maybe maybe 50, but the density of them is is low. I mean, we don't have we don't have too many droplet sizes that are, you know, in 50. I mean, look at that one. That this a that one is just a monster. I mean. Look at these drops. They're just huge. Look at that. They're way outside. Look at that. They're way outside the, the limit. Look at this one. Way outside the limit. I mean, these this one here probably might be 50. Um, I think I already looked at these, right? Those probably may, might be 50. But I mean, look how far apart these drops are. And there's not really any finer uh, drops around it. It's just these larger ones. And yeah, this is just, I can't believe it, that this nozzle is, I mean, it's like a wimp compared to all the others. Don't buy this nozzle from this vendor. Okay, so I will disclose who this vendor is so that you're not suckered in in, in buying this um, th this nozzle. Yeah, I am. I am kind of like surprised by this result but it's good that we're doing this 
That way you know what to buy and you know what to use and you have a high confidence that you're using the right nozzle for your high pressure aeroponic system. Okay, so now let's go to, I wanted to do something. So remember this nozzle here, okay, is my favorite nozzle. Man, this is, this is just amazing. I mean, that's such a beautiful pattern. Look at that density of fine mist. I want to know how this nozzle will perform if I reduce the pressure to 60 from 90. Okay, that'd be good to know. So let's look at this with a pressure of 60. And so this is the same nozzle, but at a reduced pressure. Let's look right here, I'm kind of curious how it exits based upon lower pressure. So let's go back to the nozzle. Okay. Yeah, so you see, okay, you can see how that there's less concentration of droplets right here. Right here. Okay, you can see a bit less misting there. But man, this is not bad at all. Um, you're still producing a lot of um, droplets, less than 50 microns. So this is not bad. I am impressed that even at, at 60, you know, a PSI pressure of 60, you're okay. You know, your this nozzle will perform much better than the one that was sold by that vendor saying that it was a high pressure upon its nozzle. Now let's compare this, the, the droplet sizes in here to uh, human hair. So let's go here. Um, 60. Okay. Let's move this around. Yeah, the density is good. You're getting a lot of good concentration of uh, droplets. So let's compare right here. Okay, so I can see one, two, three droplets, if you can see it here, okay, there's three of them. This is the width of the human hair, okay. If you want, I can draw it in, okay, so right here is the width, okay, of the human hair, and here we have all well, three drops. So this is looking lovely, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. These drops, you can say, are roughly probably 20 to 30 microns, and we just loaded with a whole lot of drops. So once again, this nozzle is the one that we want to buy, okay? Because this is definitely producing droplets, 50 microns and less. Okay, so now let me explain how I measure the flow rate. So what I did was I um, uh, uh, kept the pressure at 90 PSI and I ran the nozzles for one minute. And then I captured all the fluid coming from the nozzle in a, in a passive bag. So I covered the front of the nozzle with the bag so I can capture all the water. And then after I capture all that water, I weigh the water on the scale. Remember, that's the amount of water that I was able to collect from the nozzle one minute, one, after a one minute interval. So, I weigh that and that would give me, a, and I put it in ounces, that would tell me how much ounces I had. Now, based upon that, let me show you here. Okay. Okay, so based upon that, one of the nozzles I measured, um, 3.55 ounces in one minute. Okay, so remember that's how much water that I captured. You can see how I did that here by weighing it on the scale. So if I have 3.55 ounces in one minute, I need to know how many ounces would that be in an hour. So if I time this by 60, that would give me the ounces in one hour, which equates to 213 ounces in one hour. Since I know there are 128 ounces in one gallon. If I divide this by 128, that would tell me how many gallons per an hour. 
which is roughly 1.66 gallons per an hour at, um, at 90 PSI. So for this nozzle here, then it's, it will use approximately 1.66 gallons in one hour. So this is good to know, so you know the, the, the flow rate because based upon the flow rate, it will determine um, the number of nozzles you can tie to one system but also to it would tell you if you want to dump your uh, nutrient to waste instead of recirculating your nutrient this will say you know how long will a five gallon nutrient last or how long will a three gallon nutrient last if you know the spray interval you can calculate it um, based upon the flow rate and the usage and then you will know how much you need for your nutrients so this is how I calculated the flow rate for each of the nozzles and I did it at 90 PSI and, um, and that will also be in my report. Okay, that completes our evaluation of the nozzles. Now if you are interested and you want to purchase the right high pressure aeroponic nozzle for your system, please click on the link below, leave your email and I will email you the report. You're probably asking, Lee, why are you having us click on the link and sending us an email of the report? Well, the reason why is that one first, one of the nozzles, which was my first high pressure aeroponic nozzle, totally bombed this evaluation test. It didn't really produce um, droplet size of 50 microns and less. I don't want to bad mouth this vendor. So, if I put it on YouTube, it would just spread all over YouTube. So instead of doing that, I'm going to send you the report because I want you to be alert of this vendor. Okay? So, so please click on the link below, give me your email, and I will send the report right away. So please subscribe right here now on Aeroponics DOI and let us take you where no gardener gone before.